Hey friends, Bethel here. Today I want to talk to you about suffering. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do that is because I'm learning myself and it's taken me a long time to work through this issue. Um, and I'm still working through it, so it's not complete, of course, but um, a lot of times Christians ask, including myself, why there's so much evil and suffering in the world if God is good. And I have talked to many pastors, Christians, um, non-Christians, um, watched many sermons on this topic. And so I just want to share a little bit about what I've learned so far and kind of work through it with you together. First, I think it is important to define what I'm talking about when I say suffering. Bearing of pain, inconvenience, loss, distress, injury, um, which can happen through death like of a loved one, um, abuse, psychological warfare, neglect. Both Christians and non-Christians alike experience suffering. And even dedicated Christians who strive for righteousness will have suffering. And I want to work through that together. Even though there's really no simple, easy answer, there still are some answers. John 16.33 says, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus does warn us in John 16 that we'll experience these tribulations and to not pull away from him. Because I know, I don't know about you, but when I'm really going through suffering, I tend to not want to talk to anybody about it and I just withdraw. And I tend to do that with Jesus as well. And uh, scripture warns us to cling to him and not to pull away. Matthew 13, 20 through 21 says, As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. So Jesus wants us to cling to him during times of trouble instead of turning away. And Psalm 63, 8 says, My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. So one sermon I watched that I thought was really good was shared by a friend of mine who at our church. And this young pastor got up and was explaining suffering. And he said that, um, in this life, we will have suffering with or without Jesus. But with Jesus, we have hope, which is different than without, obviously. <laughs> so <laughs> Romans 5, 3 through 5 says, We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. So as we see in the story of Adam and Eve, that sin, that action um, of accepting what the enemy was giving them was opening the door to suffering because sin then came into our world. Um, and suffering can't take control of our lives anymore though with the hope of Jesus there. Without the hope of Jesus, we can get we can spiral down into despair pretty easy, or we can try to cling on to the worldly items that we have, but it, it never fulfills that hole that we have. Um, you know, I remember when, before I had accepted Jesus into my heart, I clung on to a lot of the worldly things for comfort and um, just to have that false hope in worldly things because you know, before I had Jesus in my heart, I, I got pregnant at the age of 15 and I was drinking and smoking in grade school. Um, I was hanging out with rebellious friends and I was doing rebellious things and acting those things out. And I would try to get comfort from what the world told me. And, you know, even going through all that, I still thought I was a good person because the world told me I was and the world told me, um, you know, you deserve the best. Oh, it's this person's fault or this situation's fault. Um, don't worry about that. You know, cling to this thing and receive comfort here instead of taking responsibility for my actions and looking at um, 
the problems that I was creating all on my own because I didn't even know what holiness was. And so um, those choices that I made only brought turmoil, frustration, and emptiness inside my heart. Galatians 6, 8 says, For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Now that I've accepted Jesus into my heart and he has started to realign my heart, I want to know what Jesus finds acceptable, what his definition of a good person is. And I stopped clinging to worldly things like people. I, you know, I used to cling to people to try to get them to fulfill this emptiness. Um, or I would drink a lot and think if I just numbed it, that it would be better. Um, but we're supposed to strive for holiness. And once we do that, we start to see things that the Lord sees. And He is able then to dwell in us even stronger. Um, because we are working towards what He wants, His truth, not mine. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. One of the reasons why I am constantly reaching out to people and saying, you know, read this scripture and, and try to get closer to Jesus, it's because I have been on the other side of that and I know the darkness. And I am trying to encourage people because I want them to experience what I've experienced, not because I think I'm better than anyone else, but because I know how much better it is on God's side. 1 Peter 3.14 and 1 Peter 3.17 says, But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. So our Savior uses anything that's happening to us it, that causes suffering. He uses it for good. And if we're abiding under Him and we suffer, then it is for our glory in Him. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. Another thing I've had to accept when learning about suffering is that I'm not going to fully understand. Uh, God's ways are higher than mine, and He knows better than I do. And just as when I try to explain to my young children that they can't do something or that something that they did wasn't right, and they don't understand and they're fighting back, it's the same with God. God knows why we go through what we're going through, but we don't always know. In Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Have you ever asked why doesn't God just remove evil? I know that I have asked that question many times, and recently he's been kind of showing me that if he removed evil, then we might be in more of a robotic type state. You know, free will is important to us as individuals. We, we want the ability to choose for ourselves, just like when our children get older, they want to be able to make their own decisions and they fight against when we try to put too many boundaries on them when they get older. So as we mature in Christ, we need to make sure we're taking our responsibility um, in Him to a respectful reverence, I guess, of, of what he would like. And so God does want to give us that free will so that we can make decisions on our own and decide between good and evil. And the other way that it could happen to remove evil would be to put in place all of these laws, like in the Old Testament, which we've been there, done that, um, which he removed because it wasn't the best type of situation for us. And we can kind of see it now with our own laws that we, it becomes more of a totalitarian state, which wouldn't be good either because then we would just be oppressing people, which would not be freedom at all. So um, it is important that we have the right to choose between good and evil. And it does tie into suffering 
unfortunately it affects people you know people are affected by people other people's bad choices and then we suffer and God sees all of that C.S. Lewis said I suggest to you that it is because God loves us that he gives us the gift of suffering pain is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world you see we are like blocks of stone out of which the sculptor carves the forms of men the blows of his chisel, which hurt us so much, are what make us perfect. Now the other thing that I have really been hearing from the Lord on this is that in our weakness, we are made strong. When we're suffering, we feel really weak and just helpless. But there's hope in that. And that is kind of where the Lord starts to mold us is in that, that uh, wrestling that we go through. 2 Corinthians 12.10 says, For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So this scripture kind of reminds me of the difference between Martha and Mary when they came to Jesus after Lazarus had died. Both Martha and Mary came to Jesus with the same statement. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But the difference was that when Mary came to Jesus, she fell at his feet weeping. And Martha was very logical, like just trying to work it out logically. But when Mary came and fell at Jesus' feet, she was emotional. And it says that Jesus was moved in his spirit. And then he wept. So, and right after that, that's when he's like, show me where he's, where he's at you know i just think that's really a eye-opening picture of when we come to jesus in our brokenness he receives that much more um, deeply than when we just try to logically work it out humility is a big key in this and if we remember jesus is the lion and the king of kings and he came as a humble lamb to be tortured basically and killed for his people. The King of Kings who has the most power in the universe humbled himself bowing down for his people. Just remember that Jesus did it for all of us. Jesus went through so much suffering for us and when I think about that, it gives me comfort because I know he's seeing what I'm going through. And I know that anything that happens to me will be for his glory. And that he went through it too. And he can really relate to what you're going through. So the next time you really feel like you're going through great suffering, just remember that maybe God is molding you because he has a huge plan for your life and he wants to use you for something great.